Hi friends, welcome to Sure All the Brow Phenom. She makes you feel alive. Hi friends, and welcome back to Save the Arts TV and my show, Sure the Brow Phenom. What we're going to do today is a little bit of microblading. One of the first steps what you need to do is analyze your client's face. You want to determine the best shape based on what's growing naturally. She has a significant amount of hair. So one of the first steps that we need to do is wax her eyebrows. And that's what we're going to do right now. If you've seen any of my other videos, you know that I always love to start in the middle. We're going to get a great focal point and starting point. And it's right here. Also, I always ask my clients how they like the front of their eyebrows. Because I have done this client before, I already know that she does like them on the square side. So now, great. We've got a great starting point. You can see that area is clean. And it's nice and crisp in the front. Second, what I always do, I prefer to do the top of the brow next. If you're starting from underneath, if you've watched any of my other videos, any of the other brow videos, I always say when you start underneath, you, can, you get into trouble. If we're starting at the top, we've usually got a very clear area or visual, visualization of the hair that needs to be removed. Some people don't wax on top of the brow. Um, I think it's a personal preference. That's something you want to talk with your client about. And so again, because I've done her before, I know that she doesn't mind that. And it also gives that area a very nice clean shape. If you can see now, it's coming all together and we haven't even done that much. There's a huge difference with just doing these very minor areas. You might have some people whose hairline becomes attached or starts to grow into their eyebrows. Let's just go ahead and separate that. <laughs> you know who you are. One of the best things I like about waxing is that it's an exfoliant. So anywhere where you're going to lay wax, anywhere on the body, it's going to instantly lift, lighten, and smooth out that area. In terms, if we're talking about the face and you wear makeup, then you don't want to have fine hair in that area because if you don't want to remove it or you think nobody can see it, we can see it. And what your makeup actually does is highlight it. So if you've got fine fuzz on your face and you're trying to conceal it with makeup, um, your, your makeup is actually acting as a highlighter. So you might want to consider having the fine hair from your face removed. And there are various things um, and ways that you can do that safely. So now we're working underneath. We've got her top and her sides done. Um, we're going to give her the first time. This is not her first time having microblading done. I'm going to give her more of a curved arch. The very first time, which you'll see in um, some still pictures, that'll be uh, up shortly. Her arch was more of an angle. We're going to do it just a little bit curved. Um, not so defined. A little bit more feminine. A little softer. So you can see. If you're looking at her, her other eyebrow, this is not the one that has the scar because that's the area where I'm going to do some, a few short strokes but we're still going to wax it. So if we didn't do anything else, and this is always my goal with any of my clients, if you have the ability, I still want you to be able to wear your natural eyebrow if you wanted to. 
as well as being able to fill it in yourself if you wanted to. But if you didn't, I want you to be okay with that. So my, I'm going to always try to maintain the integrity first of your skin and then of your hair and then of your, of your look. I'm not going to make a mistake or try to take off too much hair because I want you to always be able to, if you didn't have on anything, I still want you to be, look as flawless as possible. So if you can see the difference in the two brows, we've just waxed that one, you have this one, and then what I'm gonna do is wax this and remove the hair that's there as well. The scar is right in the middle. You can see that. So I'm going to brush it. We've already had trimmed the eyebrows prior. And we're going to go ahead and wax this one as well. I've been meeting a lot of people, especially when I travel, that will say, oh, I've had microblading done. Um, they, and they weren't 100% satisfied. I don't believe in surprises. Um, we are going to create our own stencil using your eyebrow with an appropriate shape for you. So one, you're gonna know what it looks like before we're finished so that you don't have any surprises at the end. There's no reason for that. As well as I believe in waxing, there's nothing wrong with waxing the area and that's probably how you're gonna determine whether or not that person is a true esthetician. If they pull out a razor and start trying to shape your eyebrows prior to microblading, you don't have to do that. The hair needs to be completely removed so that we're clear on where we need to work. I met a wonderful young lady who told me that the person didn't shape her eyebrows before making the um, the microblading strokes. And I found that very uh, surprising because the brows need to be shaped first and foremost. That's one of the first steps. So if you can see right now, the brows are, they're done. She's got that space. If it's brushed the wrong way, then she's got that space right in the middle and that's what we're gonna work on. She also has a few gray hairs and um, You've probably seen maybe in my other videos or you can go back and take a look of what we do. If you've got brown, you've got some gray hair in there, you have the option to tint. That's a nice option. You can do so much with your eyebrows now. That's, that's the main thing I want people to know. You, you've got options. If you're not pleased with your eyebrows, these days you've got the option to fix it. You can wax, tint, fill in. They've got lace front eyebrows and, and what we're gonna to do today is microblading which right now that's the most popular because of the duration of the time that it lasts. And because it's so simple, there's no maintenance to it other than brow waxing. And you can go a little bit longer, but in order to keep that area nice and fresh and clean looking and keep it, you know, looking optimal, you wanna still continue to get them waxed. And it's good to find an esthetician that can wax them because at all times, she'll try to maintain the integrity of your microblading. It is an investment. So you don't want someone who's just random and who's not experienced with waxing to do it because what they may do is go in a little bit too close. A real artist is gonna use strokes um, and you're, as well as work with the natural hair that you have in order to give it the look that it needs. So if you're going to someone who is inexperienced or is not um, just artistically inclined, that individual may go in a little too close and it will compromise your, um, the service you've paid so much money for. Because remember, the microblading fades. You usually will have the duration of about a year. Um, but it's just under the skin and the skin is our largest organ. It's made up of layers. So if you just a few moments ago, I told you waxing is an exfoliant. So each time you do it, you're removing a few layers of skin. So basically what I'm trying to say, if you are not having your eyebrows properly waxed and you're getting microblading done, 
you will not have the duration um, that you would have if, you, if you're not going to someone who's licensed and knowledgeable about what you're doing. So at this point, we are going to stop. I'm getting ready to prep, and we're going to put some strokes right into that little area right there. Hi, friends. So we're back, and we're getting ready to do some strokes. Um, if you've noticed, we've waxed them, we've got them shaped, we've got them ready. Um, if she did not have eyebrows, we would have done some mapping. But again, um, she has had microblading before on this same brow. And um, I'm very familiar with her face, so I don't have to do the mapping. The work is already done and she has adequate brow. We did not need to do, or we didn't have to do face mapping with this or eyebrow mapping. It's clear that where our starting points are very clear, as well as where it um, ends, as well as where her arch is. I'm very familiar with this client and she's had microblading before, actually in this same area. So right where this scar is, faintly, very, very faintly, there are some strokes left. I'm not sure if you can see that. People ask me all the time, well, what is it gonna look like when it fades? What is it gonna do? What will I have to do? If your microblading was done correctly, if it was done well, if the pigment that you used is premium, this is the effect that you should have. Nothing, there's no change of the color. There is a very vague, vague hint of it left. We're gonna, I'm gonna actually have to look back uh, at the shot that we did with my phone to give you the exact date. But if I had to guesstimate right now without having the first one right in front of me as we're filming, I am going to say it was approximately three years ago. Um, and I'm gonna ask this client, how, how um, when did it really start to fade? Did you get the longevity of, of about a year, a year and a half? Um, I did. It, it, it has been about three years since mm -hmm. we initially uh, did the microblading mm -hmm. for the scar. Mm -hmm. um, and it lasted about a year, maybe a little over before I started um, seeing where I would have to kind of fill it in mm -hmm. a little bit with a pencil. Mm -hmm. um, I do know initially when we first did it, um, we just did the one session. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I want to say speak on that because I know that there are times when people have to go back and get retouches. Mm -hmm. And I did not have to do that. Mine mm -hmm. lasted, like I said, about a little over a year without me having to even go and get um, retouches done to the brow. Okay, so that's great. We never did a retouch on you. We didn't do a 30-day retouch? Mm -mm. No, that's we didn't great. Do it. And you know what? Actually, before we start, let me say something about that. Um, there is, it is common for you to have a 30-day or 45-day retouch. And, and what that is supposed to be, it's not to have to go back in and do the whole brow completely over again. It's just to fine tune it, to maybe make them thicker, to maybe make them longer. You, you even have the option to maybe round out the front um, or define the arch area. Um, so don't, don't get disenchanted. I want people to know that you will probably, for the most part, I'm gonna give it 92%, of people are gonna to have to get a retouch. And what um, most um, certified micro uh, pigmentation specialists do is include that in the initial price. So then that way you are done. So if you've gotta go back two, sometimes maybe even three times, um, those should be at distinct and timed intervals so that you can experience the optimal results because after that, that's when you're gonna have the longevity of about a year, year and a half. So this is a manual method. People ask me all the time, well, what do you use? What do you use? It's, this is a tool um, and it's, it's disposable. All of my, um, the things that I use really are. I like to use them on one client, then that's done. Um, the cost is more than enough for me to cover what my, my supplies are, so I do not mind um, having everything um, completely disposable, and especially the needle. Um, it is sterilized, and it comes in a sterilized package. So again, what I'm gonna do is go ahead, and we're gonna start, I'm gonna look at her other eyebrow, though I've already done this, and like I said, she's had it done before. I know the exact area where she needs it. But for the sake of the color, I'm gonna to have to carry this back through both eyebrows. 
So we're going to start right at the front. And I'm holding the skin very taut. You have to stretch it. You have to get it tight. One thing that does, it gives you a distinct area of where you need to work. It lets you know, as well as it diminishes the discomfort that the client may or may, or may not have. Uh, everybody's pain tolerance is different. I've got some pigment on my needle. And you can see that those are little strokes. And there are three right there. We've got the color in there. <clears throat> and then we're going to proceed. I don't like to get a lot of color on mine because I want to keep it very clear of where I'm working. I want to be able to see it. So I just lightly do it. We're going to go back in and we're going to do it again. I'm using the other hair that I left because we've already got her shape. I know exactly where I need to work and I'm not going to go beyond that. You may not be able to see it, but I can also see very little hang in there, um, mm -hmm. strokes from the previous application that we did. They're very light. I don't know if you can hear that sound. It makes a nice little scratching sound. And we're going to, after I finish making this initial round of strokes, we're going to let that sit on for a little bit and let that marinate. It's not too discomforting. Mm -hmm. um, it actually feels kind of like a little scrape mm -hmm. against my skin. Mm -hmm. um, once you get used to it, it's almost like a tattoo. Um, I don't know if anybody, you know, lots of people have tattoos now, but the initial outline is usually what is what's mm -hmm. more uh, discomforting. And then as you continue with the strokes, I just kind of get used to it mm -hmm. and that's good to know because you someone can give you a basic um, description of that feeling but it, it's it's hard to explain um, it is something to get that you get used to very quickly again the reason why I'm doing the right eyebrow as well is be, is for the sake of the color and let's talk about that I had already predetermined which color I'm going to use uh, for those of you who may not be in the area and you can't come to me and you're considering having it done that's why we're doing this video so that you'll have all the information that you need and one thing that what you don't want to do when you're looking for an artist they need to be able to discuss the color with you if somebody pulls out some black pigment and they want to put that on your eyebrows that's a sign to say that you don't want to do it you do not want to proceed black will fade especially if the base is blue <clears throat> it's going to fade to blue and then initially and then it will end up fading to light purple so if you see people walking around and they've got that tinge of blue um, on, on their face or in their brow area that's where it, that's where it comes from you there are various shades of brown that you can use and a, and a true specialist someone who has been trained appropriately will always find the shade of brown that works for you it can be a cool or warm shade but again don't allow anybody to use black on your eyebrows because it's going to be too dark and when it begins to fade you will not experience optimal results and you're going to have that that shade of blue that you don't want on your face and it might be a light blue but nevertheless it's going to be blue and it's going to be in your eyebrow area the way that i approach doing this is i want my clients to be able to have the option of whether or not they want to do it again i don't want you to have to do it again i want it to be a choice so just like we said initially it's been three years since she's had it done what did we continue to do during that time we continue to wax and shape and she filled in as she felt she wanted to and then that was it so for today we came in and we're just going to refresh it and pretty soon she'll be on her way
You always want to create strokes on both parts so that the color remains uniform throughout. And let's see, when was the first time I did your eyebrows? Let me tell the people about that. I have been coming to Cheryl for over 10 years, actually. Mm -hmm. um, I initially, my initial visit when I came to see her, I thought she was extremely professional. She was not like anyone else that I had ever had to do my brows. And the reason for was was that I was a new client. She didn't just sit me down in the chair. She actually talked with me. Um, so she did kind of like a small consultation to talk about my skin, if I had any skin issues, if I was allergic to anything. Um, she really took her time. That's what I like. Um, and then she pulled out a little measuring tool. That is when I knew that she was the truth. She was a professional and she was an artist. She actually measured in between my brows to make sure that the symmetry was uh, the same on both sides. She noticed that I had the scar um, immediately um, and then she stopped and she talked to me about the scar and you know how I like my brows shaped. Um, it took maybe one or two times I would say for her to get comfortable um, with how I liked my brow shape with the scar because I was very self-conscious about it at first. Um, but since then she has been doing all of my uh, brow work. She does my facials. Um, anything that I need done in relation to skin care or my brows, I have been coming to Cheryl for, like I said, over 10 years. And I recommend her highly. Well, thank you so much. Um, and it's true. You know, somebody stole my measure. I had to get another no. one. They did. They did. And that's important to me uh, for, for it to be as even and as perfect as we can get. That's going to be my goal. You, I can't tell you how many people I've met. And I say, well, how do you like your brows? And they'll say, nobody ever asked me that. And I'll say, well, okay, well, let's, let's, let's see. What do you like? Mm -hmm. My biggest, um, well, I can't even say it's my biggest. It's just one of the things that really get me is when people have someone else's eyebrows on their face. Um, eyebrows are not um, cookie cutter. They have to match the person's face and you have to be able to discern that immediately when you see someone, especially if you want them to look good. And this is how I earn a living. So I want you to be pleased. I want you to tell other people and I want you to return. So we're going to do now, we're going to let this sit on. We've got some strokes in there. If you, you can see clearly, clear, clear, I'm sorry, clearly um, where they are, where they're supposed to be. We'll let them sit on for a while and we'll be right back. Okay, friends, so we've just completed the strokes. Again, she didn't need that much. It really only took moments to, to do and to carry it through, if you can see me brushing through it. Now, aftercare. What you wanna do is keep the area moist and keep things from getting in it. So I recommend something that's been around forever. If it's safe for babies, it is most definitely safe for you. And it's A&D ointment. And you wanna put that on at minimum twice a day for seven days. During that time, usually about somewhere around the third or the fourth day, it's gonna to begin to possibly itch and it and it will flake a little or scab just like a regular tattoo would probably not as much so somewhere around that third or fourth day you'll start to notice it it'll do the bulk of that for about 24 hours and what you want to do during that time is be careful not to pick at it don't scratch it um, just keep it moist so even with cleansing all you want to do is just pat it pat the area you can cleanse your face but if you're using a face wash with possibly salicylic acid in it lactic acid glycolic all of those things that we have in our face washes um, you just want to be careful to avoid that area but again, you want to keep it moist for seven days. That's going to help you, um, well, it's going to help combat the itching. And the consistency of the A&D is similar to that of petroleum jelly. And what that does is help to keep things, the environment, from getting into it. So you can do your normal uh, routines. You can, you can work out. You can go to work. There's, um, n there's typically nothing that you have to avoid except for... Um, 
getting anything into the area. So although you can towards a certain point towards the end start to put makeup and things like that on, I would just simply say let's just avoid it. So you want to avoid your eyeshadow and all that other kind of stuff. Go ahead and let it properly heal so that you can experience um, the longevity of the results because the more manipulation that you do in the beginning stages that will delay the healing and it will also shorten the duration of you having the perfect eyebrow. Do you have anything you want to say friend? No, I feel great and I'm excited to see the results. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm excited. It's going to look great just like last time. <laughs> so. so friends, now we're done and I'm going to give her the mirror so she can see them for herself. She's been a great client. Oh, wow. It hasn't taken that long uh, for her to achieve and have the eyebrows that she wants. So if you have any questions, please just go ahead. You can send me an email at Cheryl the Brow Phenom. Um, I've gotten a lot of questions too about classes. I do one-on-one -on -one classes. You can also um, reach out to me via email. Uh, with that information. Any questions that you may have, Cheryl the Brow Phenom at gmail.com. This is Save the Arts TV. Be sure to like and subscribe and view all the other wonderful videos that you'll see there. And we will see you next time. Bye, friends. Save the Arts TV. Let's go.